This summer is all about watercolor flowers. There are two ways you can join in the fun. Number one, if you want the basic tutorial, you're here, yay. Follow along with the video, paint your flower with me, and subscribe so you don't miss the other flowers that are coming out every week this summer. Option two, join painting through the seasons. My new course that's all about painting watercolor flowers, but you'll get extra instruction on how to sketch your flowers, how to mix your watercolors, watercolor techniques each week. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you want that extra guidance, scan the QR code to join me today. Now let's paint some flowers. All right, let's start the sketch of our carnation. So one of the defining characteristics of carnations is the shape of their petal. They have that rough edge on the edges of their petal and that is how you're going to make your flower look like a carnation. They also have this cup shape. I'm starting with that on this right hand flower. If you are not, if you are looking at the flower and you can see the bottom, you'll see that cup shape and the stem coming out of it. So I started with that one to try and get some movement going in this piece. I know I'm going to have a bud here in the middle and so I'm making that long cup shape. I know that the top of the bud is just the zigzaggy petals all squished together and then I still have the little cup on the bottom and the stem coming out of it. So there are the petals coming out of the bud. If you're looking at the reference photos, you will see that. And on my right hand side, I am just trying to get the idea of petals going around here. And you can see I am making them pretty rough because those petals are very zigzaggy on the edges. Also, I want movement. And so I'm making these petals go towards the center I'm working my way around, always thinking of where the center of the flower would be. I'm using the reference photos to do these petal shapes because it helps me see the movement of the flower petals and get some variety going without making it look weird <laughs> always check your proportions you want them to be fit the proportions fairly accurate everything else pretty loose and then your flowers will look really good i know i want to put one more flower in here so again just kind of sketching the petals as i see them on these reference photos the more you sketch, the easier it will be. And so just keep going. If you don't like your first sketch, then just don't use that one, erase it. Also, you can try and sketch these flowers in your sketchbook first before you move on to your watercolor paper. And that will make you feel more confident when you move on to the watercolor paper. And so you won't be so nervous and you'll be able to loosen up some more. So this one's head on, so we won't see the cup shape. We're just gonna see all the petals fanning out. And then think of where the center is as you put your stem down. I'm going to add some of the leaves. Their leaves on carnations are pretty thin and long. So just add, and usually there's some of these little buds on the stems. So add some of those in, add your leaves and your sketch will be complete. One of the things with carnations is there are, they come in a lot of colors. So I am creating a peach color using quinacridone burnt orange, cadmium yellow medium, and opera rose. And I'm just gonna be mixing those colors as I go so I can get different shades of the same uh, color. I'm gonna start with my petals today. So one of the defining characteristics of carnations is that rough edge. And so you wanna make sure 
as you're painting your petals, you get this rough edge going and that will help help you define this flower and other people will know what it is. So this is the first layer, so don't get too worried about it. Just make sure you're getting those rough edges with your brush and leaving white highlights throughout your flower. So I have one, this flower I'm working on, you can see the bottom and the, the petals are coming up to the top. I have one that is a bud and I have one that is a full flower facing us. You can see I am just dropping in some extra color on this layer to get some definition going. You can do that as well. For the bud, you just want to make sure the top is pretty jagged. You can add in some extra color and that's done. That's pretty easy. Now for this final one, again, the same thing, just get a pretty rough edge going on those petals. leave some white spaces and if you want to add definition as you're going then drop in some extra color as you go also feel free to paint whatever color carnations you want there's so many different varieties you do not have to do peach you can do pink you can do red there's so many different colors to pick from when it comes to carnations and the interesting thing is they all have different meanings too I love flower meanings. So you can see how just that zigzaggy line and the highlights of the whites are already starting to define this shape as a carnation. It's so cool how just a few brush strokes can give you, can help you, um, define this flower. So let's get going with the stems and the leaves. I'm using perylene green mixed with a touch of cadmium yellow medium to get a springy green color. I'm putting in some green gold as well to lighten it up. Now, sometimes I paint these stems and make sure that my petals are wet so that these colors bloom together because I love when that happens. I may have worked a bit slowly today, so it may not happen as much, but I believe my lowest flower is still wet enough to maybe do some. You can drop in different colors as you go. You can see how that first one is light at the top and darker at the bottom. Just have a light touch when you do your stems if you want them nice and thin. And having your stems move in these different directions gives movement to your piece. It makes it look more interesting. And it's fun to get those curvy lines going. Carnations have these skinny little leaves. They can be fun to paint. And they also have these little buds that grow on their stems so as you're doing the leaves also add some little buds in as you're going you can see I put mine at the bottom I'm just getting a little bit darker paint to add some extra definition to these leaves on the first layer and remember this is the first layer so we're gonna keep going on this You can add as many leaves as you want or as little leaves as you want. It just depends on your style 
and what you want your carnations to look like. Just checking to see if there's anything else I want to do. And that's looking pretty good. So I think we're good for the first layer. Or maybe, oh, let me add a little bit to extend that stem just to make it a little bit different on the bottom. Now we can let that dry. Now that the first layer of the carnations is dry, we can move on to adding our second layer, which adds some more depth and dimension to these flowers, because you can see they're looking a little flat right now. So I'm mixing up my quinacridone burnt orange and my cadmium yellow medium and my upper rose to make that peachy coral color again. And just trying to get a bit more pigment this time to make it darker. And I'm just going to start adding little blobs of color on my petals. Remember, we're painting loose, so we're not looking for realism. We are looking for the suggestion of the flower, the main elements that it has, the main defining characteristics, and um, like highlights and shadows. But it doesn't have to be realistic. Loose painting is loose for a reason. Um, so have fun with this. And I just, I wiggle my brush around that edge to get the zigzag feel of those petals. That's all I'm doing to get that shape. I'm just dropping in a little bit more color to get that variation that carnations have a lot of like when you're looking at a carnation you can see lots of darks and lights going on in those flowers for my buds just adding adding in a little bit more definition and now we need to add that layer to this left one you can see the difference already when you look at the right layer or the right flower compared to the left flower, how much more interesting the right hand side is with just that one extra layer of paint on it. And do remember, you can put as many layers as you want on these flowers. If you wanna keep getting it darker and darker, then keep adding more layers. You may end up losing some of the translucency of the paint, but some people like that look. And if you do, then go for it. While there are traditional watercolor techniques, it does not mean you have to follow them. You can do what you want to do. Now it's time to add a bit more definition to the green. So I just mixed up my green color again and I'm making some darker parts in these stems and in the leaves. You can see I just added in another bud. If you feel like doing that, go ahead. If you felt like it was missing something, if you want more leaves, then definitely add some more leaves. If you feel like it's missing that, and then let it dry, and we'll go on to the next layer. Now that that layer is dry, it's time to add some details. I am using a Derwent Ink Tense pencil. These pencils are so interesting because they can act like watercolor. If you take a brush and 
a brush with water on it and go over these lines, the color will spread out. And so don't feel too nervous about adding these marks. All I'm doing is going around and, and re-emphasizing that rough edge of the petals and adding some little marks inside some of the petals. You can do this with these Derwent pencils, or you can just use your number two pencil, your sketching pencil, whatever you have, just to add some marks. I like to work in layers, and so I love adding more layers on top of other layers because I feel like it adds so much depth to the paintings. Remember to follow the shape of your petal. So I think um, with the ones that are facing up toward the center, I want to make sure my lines inside are going toward the center. The ones that are spreading out, I want to make sure those lines are spreading out. You want to keep that movement going. I also have my green pencil, so I'm going to add some marks to my leaves and stems. If you feel like you didn't paint enough leaves, you can always draw a leaf in with your pencil. That always adds something interesting. Or you can just get your paint out again and add a leaf. I only did two paint layers on these flowers, but if you wanted to add more, you could. Just have fun with these marks. There's nothing serious about it. Just play around and see what you like. And then the super fun part, adding some splatter. I'm using quinacridone burnt orange. Splatter all over that flower. It's so fun. And I usually do two colors. So I'm adding in some of that cadmium yellow medium to get a lighter yellow orange. And I'm going to splatter that. And I think it's done. Join me next week for the next flower or join me in painting through the seasons if you want to go even deeper into watercolor. Remember, this is the basic tutorial for the week. This is what you will see every week through the summer unless you join me in painting through the seasons. This course was built to dive deeper into watercolor to help you learn how to sketch your flowers, how to mix your colors, uh, different watercolor techniques every week. And I wanted to do that so that if you like a step-by-step -step approach and if you want more instruction instead of just painting along with me, then you can and you have that option. Right now, the course is discounted because I'm adding the flowers as we go. And so after summer's over, the price will jump up. So jump on that discounted price now and I will see you in there.